Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, church. Very excited to be here today. I barely wear a suit, so if you see me in one, let me see. See, I'm coming up here, always oh, lost supper, right? I am a typical African guy. I love to wear my African stuff. Suit is not for Isaac. But today God said you need to wear a suit, my friend. When God calls you, sometimes he calls you from the worst places. And I'm talking about myself. Um, my life is a whole testimony. Today's sermon is more about me, but maybe it's about you too. Before I speak, let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We praise you for all that you have done. Lord, we come before your throne. Lord, touch my lips. Let your words flow, not mine. Take away my pride and my weakness, my sinful nature, and Lord, uplift me to give your word to your church. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Today, my sermon is titled, The Audience of One or Everyone. If I am to title it again, I would say, because of those who sat, the audience of one or everyone. We find ourselves in a world willing to dictate how we live our lives, a world that is daily telling us we should be different, showing us the best way to avoid and disregard the God that created us. The world is getting so cold and dark to the point that it gives us everything that we want and take away what we need the most, and we allow it because of those who sat, because of the audience of everyone taking out God in our lives, in our churches, in our marriages. This world is conforming us to be like it, tainting the identity that we were created with. Most of us don't know who we are anymore. We live by what the world dictates for us. The world is teaching us how to separate ourselves from God and focus more on what we want. From our families to our churches to our schools, that is the scariest part. Where kids are groomed, this world have dictated how our schools should be run. Now it's even hard to find schools that recite the Lord's Prayer. We recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of United States. But then we've taken away the Lord's Prayer in schools. And not just public schools, even our Adventist schools doesn't do it. We are scared to stand alone. We are trying to fit in into a world that he created and warned us to be careful because woe to us, the evil one is here. And we are still trying to fit in. Rather than accepting his word. Rather than living the life. Rather than being created in his own image. The God factor is taken out in everything in this world now in our lives. You can dance around it and try to argue. 
but that is the truth. Today, I want us to look at two characters in the Bible. One is the life and pride consumer versus the life of fear-stricken woman degraded as unclean. Today, I want us to focus on something, peer pressure. You know, when that word hit, the very first thing we think about is the young people. But peer pressure is far more beyond alcohol, drugs, and anything you can think about. Sex. Think about it. Peer pressure is about my life and your life. My identity and your identity. Peer pressure is technically telling you to seek the audience of everyone or the one. The presence of others in our lives have turned us into peerless pressure and cannonballs about to explode. We don't accept ourselves anymore. We don't even stand up to be Christians anymore when we are not at church. Out there, we are everybody. Out there, we do what everybody wants us to do. We just want to be part of something. But we forget that we have always been part of one person, which is God. We care more about what creation thinks instead of what a creator thinks. We are so scared to be cast out than to be accepted by God. We are scared that this world will cast us out if we stand up and act. Let me put it that way, act is the word. Act like Christians. Because we have forgot to live as Christians. We act it out. We don't live as Christians anymore. We don't live as man created in his own image anymore. We pretend to be his image. In Romans 1 verses 1, Romans 1 verses 1. Paul said, Paul, a bond servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God. The same thing he says in Philippians 1 verses 1. And the same thing he says in Titus 1 verses 1. Paul said, I am a servant. I'm a bond servant. Literally, Paul is saying, I am a slave to God. I am a slave to Jesus. Can we say this with Paul and mean it? We find ourselves in the world enslaved by darkness, by dark antics and attractions. Forgetting one thing that is going to happen. We're going to give account to only one person in the end. Many of us are slaves, but not to God. Instead, to the expectations of others of us. Living with the willful expectations to please others instead of God. Our churches are lost in this same idea. We forget entirely that our only account is to God, not man, who is not perfect as stated by the word of God. We care about what the world think. What imperfect human beings think. We think that people around us are hypocritical, but we live a life of hypocrites. We live as hypocrites because we don't even leave us identified by God anymore. Live your life only for one audience, which is God. 
The sad situation here is this. We pretend as if we don't care about what others think. But we are so much consumed, deep down inside our hearts, we're consumed by what people think and what people say to us. You know, to the point where people get so labor and just don't want to show up to church because of what some, somebody said. And my question is, do you come to church for God or do you come to church for that person? Do you come here to worship God or worship human beings? Because literally, this is how our churches are turning. This is how our lives are turning. We worship people. I'm going to say it point blank. We worship our pastors. We worship our elders. And we leave God behind. We call ourselves all names. I am my own man or woman. You are not. Because when he takes the breath of life from you, you are gone. You know, working in an ICU floor and seeing people pay minutes and seconds for oxygen that we get free. The minute you take them off, that's the end of their life. And God has given us this gift for free, but we still care about what human beings think than what God thinks. My point here is this. There's nothing wrong with being your own man or woman until it contradicts what God thinks of us, which will lead us to a disaster against our own selves. And that is the sad part. We don't even care anymore how much disaster will come against us. Our generation and our world now the technological world is making us think you don't need God anymore. Now we are scared to preach God. We preach how to get better, how to get rich, how to amass wealth. We don't preach God anymore in our churches. We preach how to win souls, but who are we winning the souls for? But then we find, out, find our best way to also make them leave. Because we don't imprint in them the identity that God created. Because when they came, they didn't see that. They saw mere human beings, weak, pride-stricken, fearful and insecure, insecure. Paul said, I am a slave of God. You know, this world is teaching us to be different together. Not for God, but to please the world. And we are allowing it. You know, I, I was growing up seeing the Adventist church. We kept the word. Now we keep the world now. Because what the world says goes better than the word of God. Our churches are run. <laughs> with pure insecurity. With no hope. If you are not a slave to Jesus, then you are a slave to the world and everybody else. That is the truth. Today, if you don't remember anything, remember this. If you are not living your life for the audience of one, then you're living your life for the audience of everyone else.
Galatians 1 verses 10. Paul said, For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I still pleased men, I would not be a bond servant to Christ. If you please men, you can please God. It's either you accept that or not. There's no gray area. It's either you live in the audience of one or everyone else. Titus, at uh, first Thessalonians 2 verses 4 said, On the contrary, we speak as that God approves to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. We forget that God is the only one who can test our hearts. You know, sad thing is this. When human beings test your heart, it leads to heartbreak. They break you. They take away everything that you think is prideful to you away. But we keep on allowing human beings to test our hearts. Myself included, and myself the most, we are manipulated by this world. We have forgotten who we are in Him. Today we will talk about a man who was seeking the audience of everyone while he was in the audience of one. And a woman who was seeking the audience of one was being classified by the audience of everyone to be unclean. You're thinking, who is this character? Who is this man? There is no anybody else than Peter. You know, whenever I read about Peter, I see myself. Christ said, Peter, on you I will build my church. Peter was compassionate, loyal to Christ, merciful, but Peter was filled with pride, self-confidence, anger, fear and weakness that he was not willing to accept. Peter was influenced, proud, and overconfident. Peter was more concerned about what everyone else think except what Christ thought. Peter is like us now, Adventists especially. You know, whenever people that I know talk about Adventist people, sometimes it's sad, the things they say. And it's true. Because that is what we do. We think we find ourselves and company of God. We believe we are already saved. Peter thought being with Christ, he was already saved. There was no mileage in him. Like us, we disregard his warnings now. We find ourselves filled with too much pride and confidence to the point where we make people, other people feel like they are unclean and they are imperfect. Being a Christian or being an Adventist does not take you out of the attacks of the evil one. We think we are numb to the evil one attacking us because 
we are Adventist. Because Peter was in the sight of Christ, so he thought there is no weakness in him. You know, when you read Luke, when I was reading it, I was smiling the whole time. I was like, okay, my friend, you had all the chance, but you, you just wasted it. You know, it's so funny that Peter's account and, the, and this incident happens four times in the Bible. And it's written four times and four places. In Matthew, Mark, John, and And Luke. You know, it was funny that Peter they didn't see what Christ was seeing. Luke twenty two, thirty one to thirty four. And I read, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as we. You know, Christ is telling Peter, listen, the evil one want to sift you like we. He want to take you out. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Christ prayed for Peter like he prayed for us. He said, Father, I pray that you do not take them out of the world, but protect them from the evil one. But now, no, 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 no. This is what we are doing. We have disregarded these prayers. And we are going straight to the world. And we are living as the world think. Not what God think anymore. Peter, the evil one, is coming after you in simple terms. And I have prayed for you. And it's so funny what Peter did. But he said to him, Lord, I am, all, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Pride. Peter said, I am ready. Peter said, I got this. He cannot come after me. But then he forgot that God can see it all. In the presence of the one, Peter was still seeking the presence and audience of everyone. You know, when I read this, all I thought about was when I was in nursing school. And, you know, when the instructors would tell us, if you go home, look at this page or look at this table, you know, the little mind of Isaac, knowing where I come from, you know, I think, hey, my family, you have smart people in there. It's genetic. Nursing school will humble you. I'll disregard what they will say. We go sit on a test, and everything that she said, go look at, is on a test. And I didn't even look at it. It humbled me. Because I always thought I am smart. The nursing school told me, listen, my friend, this is real world. Peter, like myself, Christ told him, this is what is about to happen. But disregarded the warnings of Christ. 
Peter did not even think he needed prayers and the warnings of the Savior anymore. Because of the disciples, he didn't want to look weak. Like Adventists, we pop up and act as if we are saved already. Peter forgot that God is the only one who can test his heart. And actually mend it and make him right. It's so sad that pride took Peter and controlled him to the point that he forgot that I need the prayers of the Savior. Peter did not even accept the prayer. He didn't even, he didn't even sit back to think about what was told to him. All he wanted to do was to prove to Christ, I got this. I don't need it. I don't need your prayers. I don't need your warning. I don't need anything. I am going with you. I am ready. That is the word he said. He used, I am ready to go with you. But you know, you go back in some parts in Mark and John, Peter is asking, where are you going? But here he's saying, I am ready to go with you. Peter made a promise. You know, Mark say it <laughs> in the most bold way ever. When I read Mark, I was, I was like, wow, this guy, I don't know how God is so patient with Peter. Then Jesus said to them, Mark 14, 27 to 31. Then Jesus said to them, all of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Listen to what Peter said. Even if all are made to stumble, yet I will not be. Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you that today, even the night before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. Another warning. And Peter said this, but he spoke more vehemently, with more power, with more energy to prove whatever he wanted to prove. If I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said likewise. You know, Peter didn't just ignore the warning, but got the other disciples to do exactly what he did. Peter was afraid of his peers, how they would see him as weak, classic insecurity. We live in a state of fear, doing what they want us to do just to please them whilst we suffer. Peter was more concerned about how his peers would judge him than how much the Savior was willing to save him from falling into the lousy net of the evil one. And we do that every day. Then it gets interesting in Luke 22, 54. Can Peter hold up to his promises? Or 
he will stumble. Peter now is found in the courtyard where they've taken Christ. Peter is cold, so he's trying to warm himself up. We find ourselves in a cold world, a dark world. All of us are cold. We are either depressed, broken, financially broken, Relationship-wise, we're broken. Peter is trying to warm himself. This is where the problem is. Where you go to warm yourself is the problem. Where you go for comfort is where our problem lies. You know, Peter could have stayed right at the gate and maybe nothing would have happened but Peter was cold so he went to warm himself up and that is where his problem started brothers and sisters where we go for comfort is the problem we are all suffering but where you go for relief is what you need to be careful. Peter went to warm himself. Do you think P Peter will hold up to this promise? Luke 22, 54 to 62. I'm starting from 55 instead. Now, when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Because of those who sat. Peter sat among them. He took a seat, comfortably sat down just to warm himself. We are all taking seats in the world, trying to warm ourselves, trying to fit in. Peter right there, all he wanted to do was to fit in. And a certain servant girl, you know, thinking about, I'm like, what was this girl looking for? You know, leave that man alone to warm himself up. Seeing him as he sat by the fire, looking intently at him said this man was also with him but he denied him saying woman I do not know him and after a little while another saw him said you are also one of them but Peter said man I am not then after an hour had passed another confidently Affirmed, saying, surely this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you're saying. Immediately, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned to Peter. Then he remembered what the Lord said. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. In our pride, we often find ourselves thinking we can do it. We got this. We, we are more equipped. That is what Peter thought. I am ready. But least did he know that he had too much pride. Least did he know that he was so much insecure. That Christ was willing to save him. We believe that when we are in the world, we can avoid what the world is offering. 
You know, that man that is going through that marital problem, that woman that is going through, oh, let me go to the club with my friends, thinking he can avoid, or he or she can avoid it. Drinks. The next thing, take one to the next, to the next. The next you find yourself addicted. That married man will say, oh, let me go visit this friend of mine who is a lady because my wife is giving me help. I'm just going to warm myself because I'm feeling too much pressure at home. The next thing leads to another, then to another. And now he has added more problems than the pressure at home. That lady said, oh, I'm going to visit this friend of mine because I am tired. I need a vacation. Just let's cuddle because I'm going through so much. Then it leads to another thing, to another. We are in a world, the problems will not stop. But where you go to warm yourself is where the problem is. It will lead you to deny God absolutely. With absolute exactitude, Peter said, I do not know this man. He was very, very sure he doesn't know Christ. Pride leads to fear, leading to denial. When we deny our belief in God, sadly, we start looking for ways to justify our wrongs. Pride leads to overconfidence, insecurity, fear, and ultimately denying even knowing the Savior. Denying that we are even Christians because we want to be in that club, because we want our friends to accept us as we are. We want to be part of everything, so we're doing all the drugs. We're doing everything, every vice that you can think about, just for them to accept us, just because of those who sat just because of the audience of everyone and forgetting the audience of one. The world is telling us to belong rather than believe in. Peter wanted to belong and he forgot all that he believed, all that he had worked for, left his nap, left his life, left his wife, left his family to follow Christ. At that moment, Peter forgot everything because he wanted to be part of that group. So all he did was, I don't know the man that you are talking about. Peter lost his identity because of those who sat Marriages, families, churches are falling apart because we, we are willing to just belong. Men, women, young, older, we are all caught in the world of drugs, alcohol, sex, name it, name everything. We ignore the warnings of God. The world is teaching us how to belong, how to please the world, how to be appreciated by the world. Think about it. How many hours we spent amassing wealth, working, spending time on social media, friends, how many minutes do you spend with the Word of God? How many minutes do you spend with your father? Peter was worried about what others thought. He wanted to belong.
with absolute exactitude. Peter, the idea of belonging, overwhelmed his belief. You know, there's a saying in my country that what an older person lying down can see when a child is standing on the tallest mountain can never see. What Christ could perceive, Peter, beyond all his knowledge, beyond walking with him, Peter wouldn't have understand. But he was consumed by the enslavement of pride and worried more about an audience of everyone than being in the audience of one. He was all this while in the audience of one, but was more worried about the audience of everyone. An Adventist, that is what we find ourselves in. We are called by God, but we are worried. We want to fit in. We want the world to accept us. So we do things for the world to accept us, ignoring the calling of God. My second character is the woman who bled for years. You know, the premise of his life is very sad. You know, in a Jewish community, if you were bleeding, even if you're on your menstrual cycle, you're counted as unclean. Think about it, to bleed for 12 good years. This woman have visited physicians upon physicians upon physicians. Seeking for healing. Seeking for freedom. But none could give him Matthew 9, 20 to 22. And suddenly a woman who had bl- f- had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of, her, of his garment. For she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. This woman have been tagged as unclean, judged, ridiculed. The audience of one see her as unclean, not to fit, not fit to be among everyone else. This woman have lived in fear all her life around the audience of everyone. She did not belong even in the audience of everyone. But this woman said, if I can touch the hem of his clothing. Think about being in these people, among these people, being unclean. Everybody that was there was unclean. But this woman didn't care about what this world will think, about what all the people around will see. All she was focused on intently was the audience of one. All she wanted was healed, believe, and belong. And what she thought could happen, happened. In the audience of one, she was made whole. She was healed Everyone degraded her. Everyone saw her as unclean. But in the audience of one, she belonged. Christ said, daughter, you have been made free. In the audience of everyone, this woman was nothing. Nothing. 
This woman was willing to be the odd one out, only to have the audience of one. Her faith and belief ultimately gave her healing, making her belong. You know, the sad thing is this. When we start to belong than believe in, the world takes us and breaks us, make us nothing. This woman said, I want to belong, but I would rather believe before I belong. So she went straight to the one that can make her belong. The one that created her and said, I want to be free. And if I could touch the hem of, her, of his clothing, I'll be made well. What the world had against her did not matter, but what mattered to her alone was what Christ thought of her. The world is still urging me and you to believe no more, but try to belong. The world is telling us to respect the views and ideas than the Word of God. Social media is becoming more important than the, than the Word of God, than our church, than your own family. The world is teaching us to be part of all instead of being willing to stand up for God. The idea of belonging, that is going to the extent of denying one to look good in front of others is what we always do. We deny God just to belong. We are even scared nowadays, even at our workplaces, to identify ourselves as Christians. We are even scared to pray at work. Our church is caught in this wave of the world. We want to be like all instead of believing. We want to belong and be accepted by imperfect humans. Because of those who sat, Peter denied Christ. Because of those who sat, the disciples, Peter was not willing to accept his weakness and adhere to Christ's warning. Because of those who sat and the audience of everyone, Peter was more concerned about everyone than his relationship with God and salvation. We do this every day. You're thinking Peter is weak. No. He is not weak. We are weak. Because we have come to know all this, but we still act worse than Peter did. The woman who bled was more concerned about being accepted by the Savior than those who sat. Peter knew he was wrong. That's the sad thing. Peter knew, I am wrong. But he still went on. When the dust settled, Peter denied Christ just to belong. Peter wanted to be seen as perfect. So he denied Christ. Don't we all do it every day? We want to look perfect in the sight of everybody at church. But deep down we are broken. Deep down we are scared. Peter had a chance to go back and reverse everything. But he didn't. He kept on going. I don't know the man. Three times he denied him. You know, God is good. Give Peter another chance to change. You know, we live in a world that is so dark and so much uncertain. Today you're here, tomorrow you're gone. Last Sunday I was talking to a cousin. He's like, hey, whenever you're coming back home, I want you to get me a phone. Last Thursday... He got into a motorcycle accident. He's gone. 
four days. See, Peter had a chance to change. The woman who bled had a chance to be in the presence of the one. Do we have all the time now? Because the world is getting smaller and getting, is getting closer to its end. If you don't see it, everything around us tell. The wars. Look at how much things cost now. It's not about government, no. This is how he prophesied for the world to be. But we keep on getting so much lost in the idea of the world. And we blame politicians. But we forgot that God, Christ said this, is going to happen. You know, now children are more dangerous than older people. 14 years old, found them in the hospital, shot or drug abused. And this is the world that we want to belong in. Why can we be like the woman seeking faithfully for the audience of one? When the chips are down, we live our lives because of those who sat. We all want to belong, be part of something, be part of someone, be accepted by someone denying God. There are two people in this world. You are either a thermometer or a thermostat. A thermometer reflects the temp, the temperature of those around you. Thermostat sets the temperature for everyone. Many of us, sorry to say it, all of us are thermometers. Where the wind blows is where we go. Where the public opinion, fashion, social media trends blow, that is where we go. Whatever people think we should do, we do. We don't stand up for anything anymore. You can see the truth is sitting there, and we're still trying to lie just to belong. You can see taking alcohol as a Christian is wrong, but what do you say? Oh, drink, but don't get drunk. And we keep on drinking. You know, in my country, they said there's SDA and SDA. That is, there's SDAs who are Secret Drinkers Association. We drink. We eat the unclean foods. We do the things that he wants us to do just to belong. Drugs. We smoke. Clubbing. Partying. Oh, it's just one time. That is the excuse. It's just one time. I'm just trying. I am stressed out. I need to go on this vacation. And when I go, this is where I'm going. This is what I'm going to do. Just one time. Peter just went there one time to warm himself. He ended up denying Christ. Every day we deny him. Thermometers. Yet God is so willing and calling us, seeking us to be thermostats. Dare to stand alone and stand out. Stop being a thermometer. Be an instrument of change. Don't curse the darkness. Just light a candle in the darkness. And trust me, everybody will come to the light. But we keep on fighting the darkness. Stop fighting it. Set a light in the darkness. Set a fire there and somebody will come. Go to the right places to warm yourself. Our church has so many organizations, so many groups. Men's group, 
women's group, children, youth, go to one of those. When you're seeking therapy, go to the right people. When our church is going wrong, say something. If you don't say anything, you are more enslaved than the wrong that is happening in the church. We are not bold anymore. You know, we think people are radical for God, right? Whenever I hear that, I start to think, are they radical? No. They are not radical. You think they are radical because you are doing nothing for God. You think you're doing so much for God because you are doing nothing. You are stagnant and you're shamelessly leaving because of those who sat, the audience of everyone. We are scared to be different. Live your life for God. He made you, not humans. Most people think we have friends. We don't have friends. Because most people around us want to manipulate and control us like robots. They are economical friends. That is, when only you bring something to the table, something economical, be it time, energy, money, popularity, the chance to travel, you are never a friend. The only friend you have is God. Because when the chips are down and you stand up for God, that is where you know whether you have friends or not. Don't be derailed by what people think. Live for God. What people think does not matter. Like what the woman who bled for 12 good years thought. What people think, what people were looking at her at, did not matter to her anymore. All she wanted was to belong and be seen by the audience of one. We despise politicians, but we live a life of politics. We live our lives to please others. We say things to please others, to be accepted, to be voted for. Oh, Isaac is great. No, I am doing it because I want you to see me to be perfect. Stand out and stop being afraid because of those who sat. Our churches need to set boundaries, set standards beyond our gates, not just in here. The great controversy, Ellen White stated, whatever may be their profession, it is only those who are world servers at heart that act from policy rather than principle in religious things. We should choose the right thing because it is right and leave the consequences with God. To men of principle, faith, and daring, the world is indebted for its great reforms by such men. The, word, the work of reform for this time must be carried forward. Do the right thing and leave the consequences to God. Because in the end, he's the one to judge you, not human beings. He's the one to offer you salvation, not humans. He's the one giving you the breath of life, not humans. Stop living a life of politics. Let's make up a word together, okay? God and audience. Together, guardians. Guardians. It's not a word. Don't try to look it up. It's not. It just came up. Guardians. Make him, your guardians, be a thermostat and leave the consequences to him. 
dare to stand instead of sitting. Because listen, Peter sat down, right? What if you would have stood out and stand up and dare to stand and stand up? Because this is the whole point. No matter how many times we sit down or no matter how many times we stand up, you're still going to sit. Set yourself free. Seek the audience of one. Seek the audience of guardians. Make him your guardians. Be bonded to God. Be slave to God. Make him your guardians in all things you do. Set yourself free. Do not be conformed to the world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12 verses 2. Be set free. Make him your guardians. God bless you.